This season, we've been covering how families are sometimes having to choose between money and medicine. Today, we've been discussing pharmacy benefits managers or PBMs and how they may be able to deny drugs to patients that are prescribed by the patient's doctor. We're joined now by Assistant Professor of Pharmacy Administration, Dr. Daniel Tomaszewski. He's joining us in the audience. And, and I want to ask you, uh, you've worked with a variety of, of PBMs. So before we get into the positives and negatives, when, when and how can a PBM override a, a doctor's decision to write a specific medication? Yeah, so can they override it directly? And the answer is no. What they can do is essentially deny coverage for it. And okay. what that means is the patient then has to out front pay out of pocket for it. In some situations, you know, a patient can afford that with cancer treatments and things like that. It's typically not a possibility because you're talking about products that may cost $10,000 a month or $20,000 a treatment cycle. And so it's not an outright override, but by denying the coverage, it essentially makes it impossible for the patient to afford the medications. How often does this happen? And, and when it happens, what is the most common reason? What's usually happening is what's called a prior authorization. And what it, it is, is the PBM has set up a, a, a scenario or a, a clinical protocol in place that they want you to use, let's say, drug A, like was referenced, and only when drug A doesn't work, you can shift to drug B. And, and a lot of times, it's actually you can use drug A, B, or C, and if any of those don't work, you can shift to D. But in this situation, you know, maybe it is just one option there for, for a patient. Now, if you need to switch from the preferred product to a non-preferred product, oftentimes the PBM cannot see the medical record. So what they're asking for is, I need more clinical information to explain to me why you need drug C. How it's supposed to work is that the PBM gets this additional clinical information, they review it for clinical appropriateness, and if it's appropriate for the patient to jump to dr drug C, they approve it, the patient gets it, and it, and it moves on like a, in a, a relatively quick fashion. The difficulty is if there are some clinical evidence that either isn't there to support the jump to drug C or um, the protocols are too tight and, and the clinician feels as though we need to jump to drug C, but the PBM feels like drug B is still an option. That's when you start to work up the chain of having to do appeals to the, through the PBM and then potentially to an outside third party uh, specialist to review it. The, the reason I think this happens is because there's no repercussions for the pharmaceutical. There's, quite frankly, there's no repercussions for anyone yeah. except for Norma. Except for the patient. And that's this money versus medicine argument.